Hi guys, it's Paula and I hope you are doing well. I am doing very well. Why you ask? Because the experiment is over. It is over, it is over, it is over. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm pretty relieved that the experiment is over. It has been a challenging year for project panning, and part of that had to do with the experiment. If you haven't heard the backstory yet, let me take you through a brief walk down memory lane. Way back in 2018, I was sent a link to a Reddit post from my friend Amanda D, which had a spreadsheet where you could enter in all of the eyeshadow you owned. You could enter in how many days a week you wear eyeshadow and how many eyeshadows you typically wear in a day and it would tell you how many years of eyeshadow you actually have. We decided to bring Jessica in and make a video called How Many Years of Eyeshadow Do I Have? It was shocking. So on August 24th, the three of us posted the How Many Years of Eyeshadow Do We Have video. And in that video, I reported to you guys that if I wore eyeshadow six days a week and I wore four eyeshadows each day, that I had 157 years of eyeshadow. It was depressing. We had so much fun with that video that we decided to keep it going. We also did blush, lip products, and highlighter. One month later, we posted our video of how many years of blush do we have. It turns out that if I use blush six days a week and I apply a cream blush and a powder blush too, I had 144 years of blush. For lip products, which we did a month after that in October, I said that if I used lip products six days a week and I applied them three times a day, I had 156 years worth of lip products. And for highlighter, which we posted a video on in November of 2018, if I applied two highlighters a day, again, a powder product layered on top of a cream product, I had only 75 years worth of highlighter, 74. Throughout the whole process of posting those videos, we talked quite a bit about the flaws with these formulas and the variables that could completely skew the results. And just within our own panning styles, how we know that these results would be different for each of us. So we decided to test out the formulas and see how they actually worked for us and our panning styles. So on January 1st, 2019, each of us began the experiment. For me personally, what that meant was pulling what the formula said was one year's worth of blush, eyeshadow, highlighter, and lip products were, and to use them according to what I said I would use them, and to see if I could actually use them up within one year, which according to the formula, I should be able to do. I completed monthly updates throughout the entire year. So did Jessica and Amanda. We've been together on this project throughout the entire year. We've supported each other. We've compared notes. I will have their channels linked down below so that you could see how it went for them if you're not already subscribed to them so you could check them out. I hope you do. For all those four categories, eyeshadow, lip products, highlighter, and blush, I pulled out 27 products in all that I should be able to finish according to the formula. And 12 months later, out of those 27 products, I've completely finished two. Two out of 27 products are completely finished. I should have 27 empties in front of me, but I only have two. Well, they're not even in front of me. I am really close to finishing two other products. They are on their last leg, and it's a matter of days that they have left, but they're not completely gone yet. <clears throat> two out of 27 products were finished. Some of you guys specifically described watching my updates as painful. Painful! I am sorry. I am sorry if I caused pain to you. Although I never found the experiment to be painful, I did find it to be highly restrictive. So, for example, some of the issues were a common panning tactic is to multitask. So if you have a blush and you wanna use it up, 
you use it as a blush, but you might also use it as an eyeshadow. If you have a bronzer you wanna finish up, you use it as an eyeshadow, a bronzer, an eyebrow powder, you use it everywhere until it's gone. But to make this experiment as valid as possible, there was no multitasking allowed. These products were to be used as intended to keep this experiment valid. Another kick in the pants was that on December 31st, 2018, I had a bunch of products that were on their last leg in these four categories, but I didn't want to include them in the experiment because I didn't know how much product was left specifically. I wanted brand new products for the experiment to again, keep it valid because according to the experiment, I should have been able to use them all up. So I'm just now getting back to some products that I was finishing up in 2018. They've been waiting for a year. I'm so excited to finally be getting back to some of these products. I'm also excited to not have to follow the rules that I set for myself a year ago on wearing eyeshadow blush lipstick. There are days where I just wanna wear one shadow across my entire eyelid and be out the door, and I couldn't do that during the experiment because I said I would wear four eyeshadows a day. And there are certainly days where I would wear six or seven eyeshadows in one day, but it was a pain in the butt. In my bathroom, these papers have been piling up. I always use recycled paper, by the way. On this side of the paper, I would keep one month's worth of data. All these hash marks are for how many times I use these products. And I have one of these for every month of 2019. This was not exactly how I wanted to spend a Monday morning, but I did because the experiment required data collection. The results of this experiment are not good, but I am really proud of myself because I can say that I did exactly what I said I would do on January 1st, 2019. I used all of these products six days a week for exactly how many times I said I would to keep the results as valid as possible. There were some major pitfalls in 2019. There were some obstacles, there were some hurdles. I got through them and in the end, I used these products exactly as many times as I said that I would use them. And for that, I'm really proud of myself. I went back and watched my introduction for the How Many Years series that I did back in 2018, where we talked about how many years of each of these categories I have. And I mentioned quite a few variables that could not be taken into account even back then. So even before the experiment started, I knew there was a lot of variables that would impact the results of this experiment. And I mentioned in each video that this is just for fun, it's just a loose guideline, it's just to see. You can't plug all these numbers into a spreadsheet and expect it to be spot on, but it's just a guideline. It's a wake-up call, frankly, it was a wake-up call. And although at that time I hadn't changed my habits, I have to wonder if the start of this series started my decision to start a low buy and therefore has helped me to have a much more successful 2019 than I ever had in any previous year. 2019 was by far my most successful low buy ever. And part of it was creating a low buy plan that works, but I think the other part of it was the serious wake up that this experiment provided. It was a slap in the face and it was shocking. To hear that I have 150 years worth of makeup and I'm already in my 40s, unacceptable, gotta stop. In my mind, prior to doing this experiment, I probably could have justified like, I will use it up. If I stop buying makeup today, I could use it up. Or if I use products more consistently, I can get through this. But once the experiment was done, there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The writing was on the walls. And after doing this experiment for a year, the evidence is that the actual numbers of how many years of makeup I truly have is much higher than I initially thought across the board. Every category is higher than I initially thought based on the spreadsheet and the formula that we were originally using. There are so many factors that go into this experiment that cannot be accounted for. Some of the ones that I discussed way back in 2018 were the fact that everybody has a different makeup wearing style. Some people like to wet their eyeshadows. Some people like to apply their eyeshadows dry. Some people like to apply their blush heavy. Some people like to apply their blush lightly. Some people like a nice nude blush that they can layer on heavily. Some people like a very pigmented blush that you only need a touch of and you're good to go. There are so many factors that are not accounted for in the formula. Some other things that you guys pointed out throughout the past year, 
and became apparently clear to me as well is the fact that different formulas might yield different results. For example, a cream blush might be easier to pan than a powder blush or vice versa. Or same thing with highlighter, same thing with eyeshadow. Maybe a shimmery eyeshadow is easier to pan than a matte eyeshadow. Maybe formulas are pressed differently. Maybe whatever the amount that the packaging says is on there is not accurate. I think any of us that have watched The Makeup Breakup have seen plenty of evidence that oftentimes there is 25 to 50% more product in a package than what the package actually claims is in there. They go over, sometimes they go under, but most of the time it seems like these companies give you more product than what they say they are going to give you. So that's wonderful, but it means I have much more product than I initially thought. All these factors played a role in the results of the experiment, but I did use these products with the frequency that I said I would, so I think it's fair for us to adjust the original numbers according to the results of this experiment. Let's do that right now. This is the last time you're going to hear me say this, but according to the experiment, one year's worth of blush looked like these four loose Bare Minerals blushes plus this deluxe sample of Too Faced blush, plus this cream blush from Maybelline, plus this pan of blush from Elizabeth Mott. The other five blushes that I just showed you really never got used at all this year. I played with them a time or two throughout the year, but my plan all along was to work on these two throughout the year, and then when I finished this one, I would pull one of those other powder products and start working on that one. It never happened. It never needed to happen. I still haven't finished this first blush. This cream blush was about half of the collective blush and the other six blushes were the other half together. So I thought, good, this will take me a year. Those other six blushes will take me a year. I'll just cycle through them one at a time. I'll finish this one first. I'll keep going. It never happened. It never happened. And I have continued to use this product since the experiment for blush ended on 1221 on 1221. So on 1221, I hit my goal of using all of these blushes six days a week, twice a day, and the experiment was officially over. I thought about stopping right there so that I could say this is exactly where I am right now. I will insert a picture that I took of where this blush was on that day so you could see the difference. But in the end, I started to think, you know, if there's any chance I could finish this before December 31st, 2019 and put it in my empties, I should try and do that. So I decided to keep using it. I did not finish it. Today is January 11th and I'm still using it. I think we have about another week or so, two at most, and it'll be gone. I think this will be in my January empties. It better be in my January empties but it is still around. I did not finish one single blush completely in 2019 out of all the blushes. Now in hindsight, I probably should have started on this guy, this itty bitty loose blush and knocked it out so I could move this one out. I did not think that through. This was only 0.1 ounces though, so there wasn't much product in here either. This however was 0.01. This claims to be 0.01, this is 0.1. So this is 10 times more product than this one. I really should have started with this one to move it out, but this was in my Pan That palette and I wanted to work on this one, plus it was more convenient, so I went with this one. In hindsight, I wish I would have started with this one and hopefully have moved it out during the year and been down a blush. It didn't happen. For blush, when I compare what I actually finished to what I should have been able to finish, I would guesstimate that I actually only finished about 30% of what I should have been able to finish. And if I adjust the original numbers from August of 2018, which was 157 years worth of blush, and I adjust it for the fact that I only finished 30% of what I thought I should be able to finish, my actual amount of blush that I have is 244 years of blush. All right, let's move on to highlighter. According to the experiment, within one year, I should have been able to finish this entire pan from L'Oreal 
Eh. Plus this loose highlighter from Bare Minerals, plus two cream stick highlighters, one of which I actually did finish. Out of the 27 products in this experiment, I did finish a cream highlighter. It was a Becca uh, liquid highlighter in the shade Opal. The other cream highlighter was a Trustique highlighting stick that I did get to the bottom of. I decided to scrape out the product that was left in the packaging, which is another factor that I couldn't account for. I do not know if the amount of product on the packaging included what was in the package or not. I'm assuming it's not, so I'm still working on this anyways, just because I loved it. But I think maybe technically I could say this was another product I finished. This is all that's left. That itty bitty bit around the edges right there is all that's left in here from that Trustique stick. I'm going to keep using it. I'm still using it every single day. That's how much is left of this Trustique stick. I really never used this highlighting powder at all from Bare Minerals. I, again, in hindsight, I wish I would have started with this. I knew for a fact that there was way more product in this pan than in this container. I really wish I would have started with this pan this first and then moved on to this one. And in hindsight, I don't know why I didn't do that, but it would have been smarter to work on this smaller one first and move it out and then work on this one. It never happened. I never got around to this. It will definitely be back down the road at some point. The, the powder highlighter that I did decide to focus on is this one right here. And I did hit a good amount of pan, but there is a really good amount of product left in here. I am nowhere, nowhere near finishing this product. There is still at least another year or two of product in here before it's going to be gone. As far as highlighter goes, I would say that if I compare what I should have been able to finish with one year with what I actually did finish, that I probably only finished about 35% of what I should have been able to finish. And I think I'm being kind when I say that. The actual number might only be about 25%, but because I completely almost finished the two highlighting sticks, plus I hit some pretty good pan, I'm giving myself 35% completed. I don't know if that's true or not. If I adjust my numbers from what I had originally said in November of 2018, that I have 74 years of highlighter, and I adjusted for the fact that with this experiment, I only finished 35% of what I should have been able to finish, the actual amount of highlighter I have now is 130 years, not 74. It's actually 130 years worth of highlighter. Let's talk about something less depressing, lip products. This was by far my most successful category out of all four categories that we did in this experiment, which means the numbers are off the least. According to the experiment, I should have been able to use this entire tin of lip balm plus a little sample of a Trustique matte lip crayon within this year if I applied them three times a day, six days a week. I did finish the Trustique matte lip crayon. That was the second item that I finished out of the 27 items that were originally in this project. This is how much lip balm is left. So I am going to say that I used 90% of what I should have been able to use within the year. I didn't quite get to 100. If this was empty, I would be at 100%. I'm not at 100%, I'm only at 90%. In October of 2018, I said that I had 156 years worth of lip products, but if I add that 10% more on to this number, I'm actually at 171 years of lip products. 10% is a lot when you're talking about that many years. That's huge. I went from 156 years to 172 years of lip products if I round up. I guess I have a lot of work to do. So despite the fact that I was closest to actually using one year's worth of lip products within one year, 
the numbers are still not looking good at all. But the worst number of all is eyeshadow. And I don't think that's gonna be a surprise to many of you that have been following me along or that know how much eyeshadow I have. It's dismal. Okay, Paula, don't drop this palette. Okay, everything is in here now. According to the experiment, everywhere you see a nice round pan, I should have been able to finish them if I used them six days a week and I applied four, shadow, four eyeshadows every day, six days a week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Those 14 circular pans should have been finished completely within one year if I applied four of them a day, six days a week. One of the biggest factors that I had a problem with with this variable was the fact that whether I'm applying one eyeshadow a day or four eyeshadows a day, I'm using the same amount of eyeshadow basically. It's not like I'm taking four different eyeshadows and covering my entire eyelid. It, if I'm going to use one eyeshadow, it's going to cover more eyelid space. And if I'm going to use four eyeshadows, each eyeshadow is going to cover a different part of my eyelid, which means I'm only using a fraction of the eyeshadow that I would if I was just doing a one shadow look. To me, in my mind, it all evens out in the end, but that's what the experiment said, so that's what I went with. I used these eyeshadows exactly as many times as I said I would, and in fact, I went over a little. I ended up hitting pan on three eyeshadows. You're only gonna see two pans today because I shattered one of them and had to repress it. But I had pan here, and I have pan here and here. I did not finish a single eyeshadow out of the 14 that you see here that I should have been able to finish completely. I did finish one other eyeshadow, but none of these 14 that I should have been able to finish were finished. I would say that what I actually finished compared to what I should have finished is really only about 20%. Let me know if you disagree, but I think I only actually completely finished about 20% of what I should have been able to finish. Which means that instead of the 157 years of eyeshadow I thought I had, the actual number is probably more like 283 years of eyeshadow. Just shy of 300 years worth of makeup. I think most of you guys know me well enough by now to know that these facts don't really change much as far as my habits, my behavior, the way I look at my stuff. I'm still gonna keep project panning. I'm still gonna try to move out as much makeup as I can. I'm still going to try and use up what I can. I'm still probably not going to declutter much if a friend came up to me and said, I don't have any makeup, I lost all of my makeup last night, I would say, come here and take some makeup. But short of that happening, I'm probably not going to give away or sell much makeup. I do receive a lot of comments, you know, consistently over time, either here on YouTube or over on Instagram, asking me why I don't sell some of my makeup. And here's the thing, this is why I don't sell my makeup, because the makeup I would like to keep is my newer makeup. If I had to get rid of 75% of what I had today, the products that I would keep are my newest makeup, which has the most resale value. The old makeup that's expired and no good is the makeup I would most likely get rid of, but I have no one to sell that old makeup to. I'd rather just keep it and use it up if I can, because otherwise it's just gonna end up in the garbage. So for those of you guys who wonder why I don't sell some of my makeup, the answer is because the new makeup that has any kind of resale value is not the makeup I wanna sell. The makeup I would be more likely to part with is the oldest stuff that would just end up in trash and I don't wanna throw it away without trying to use it up first. So if any of you are wondering about that, I hope that answers your question. I know that this project was painful to some of you and for that I am sorry. But for the rest of you, I hope you enjoyed watching this series throughout the year. Your comments, your encouragement, your interest in following along definitely kept me going when I didn't want to do it anymore. Jessica did try to encourage Amanda and me into another year of the experiment. In the end, we decided not to do it, and I'm okay with that. 
We're only 11 days into 2020, but I've already been having so much fun with project panning again and just exploring my new projects without any restraint. It's still weird. I wake up every morning and I go for a pen to chart and tally how many times I've used a product and then I'm, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I don't have to do that. It's nice. It's very nice. So I'm really looking forward to 2020. We're already 11 days in and it's just been so much fun to play with makeup again and to not have any rules about how I use my makeup and just to approach each morning with a fresh sense of what do I want to wear today because I have all of this makeup to play with and I can use any of it any way I want to. It's been nice. All right, that is it for this finale, guys. Thank you so much for watching and supporting and following along and commenting. I appreciate it so much. I hope you have enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.